Cheer up, Illinois basketball fans. Two days after an ugly loss at Marquette, Brad Underwood wins a recruitment over Tom Izzo uh, for likely the number one prospect in state right now in the class of 2022. Now that he's transferred in uh, to fill a need for a big bodied, tough wing who just seems to ooze everything Brad Underwood likes. It's Jeremy Warner, Derek Piper, emergency podcast time. Uh, Piper knew this one was was coming down the pipe, uh, I should say, but uh, it's great for Illinois to see this. Ty Rogers commits uh, at the time of taping this at 1230 uh, on Wednesday here, November 17th. Haven't seen that he signed. We've seen that Thornton, his high school, said he will, um, but uh, we'll wait a word from Illinois to make that official but Derek Piper, big get. Initial thoughts. Absolutely massive get for Illinois. Big credit to Tim Anderson, who here recently, really this fall, is making his impact felt on this staff, getting Marez Johnson out of Mean Streets and, and to tap even into the current class where you have a very promising player out of that Mean Streets program and Ty Rogers. And uh, we mentioned it after the Friday game against Arkansas State. He was in the building for that with Ty Streets and the talk this summer was, you know, Brad absolutely loved him. And uh, as we'll break into, like, just kind of his his toughness, his versatility, his two-way impact. But it's like, well, I mean, he's a Michigan player who's wanted by Michigan and Michigan State. And usually that is tough to, to make happen. And, and Illinois didn't have the, the Tim Anderson connection throughout the summer, obviously. Um, he was able to do some things behind the scenes. But it was just thought to be one where it'd be really tough to tap into that one and rally at you know at the right time but they were able to get him on campus for an official in september uh, he then went to michigan state memphis uh, alabama some heavy hitters there uh, unofficial to east lansing and then came back to champaign and uh, ultimately just a great fit i think that illinois style of play what they value uh, in toughness and, and playing defense playing fast uh, he's a guy that is very skilled offensively i know his jump shot in terms of the three can get a little bit better but he can put the ball on the floor and uh, for a bigger physical wing, that's something that they definitely have coveted and have wanted. And when you have talented guards coming in and Epps and Harris, uh, he just complements those guys really, really well. And uh, I think that the way that Illinois is winning, obviously, is, is something that is is playing in their advantage because you don't you don't walk into Michigan and see a player that's of Big Ten caliber and, and he's going to go to the Big Ten. And it, usually, it's it's those two programs. That doesn't happen going in there and, and stealing those. Uh, so that's a big statement for Underwood, big statement for Tim Anderson, and a guy that just has a ton to like about his game and vaults Illinois back into that top 20 range nationally, top five of the Big Ten. And if this holds in terms of him signing, in terms of uh, staying in that top 25 caliber range, that would give Underwood four top 25 classes in the last five years, which is that's how you sustain a program. That's how you make a statement that, hey, we're not only here at the top of the Big Ten now, but we're, we're probably here to stay. In the one class that was not, Derek, that wasn't a top 25 nationally, top five Big Ten, had Kofi Coburn in it. So I think we can look back on that one and say, yeah, that was a top 25 class with just that one guy. You're right. I mean, sustaining a program, and I think it says a lot, you beat Tom Izzo head-to-head -head because what makes his program so good is year after year they're in the mix atop the Big Ten. They don't win the Big Ten every year. They don't go to the Final Four every year. And most times they go to the Final Four, it's kind of this year you don't expect them to. Like last year we expected Illinois to do that. Maybe this year some people do, uh, despite the loss to Marquette. But you get as many bites at the apple as possible that sustained success. That's what uh, Lon Kruger and Bill Self and the early years of Bruce Weber you had. And you had one big run out of that those couple of years, one Elite Eight run, one Final Four run, national championship uh, runner up. Like that's how you have those late runs because you get enough bites at the apple where you have a really, really good team. Uh, and, and Ty Rogers, you mentioned, it. I think he, he compliments Jade Nepps really well. He compliments uh, Sincere Harris really well, two guards in the backcourt. I think he also compliments Luke Goody and RJ Melendez really well, right? Like you have Luke Goody, who's kind of this uh, skilled, high IQ player. He's got some toughness to him too. Uh, but then RJ Melendez, who's kind of this athletic, skilled, versatile forward, who I think eventually can be a, a really high ceiling player. But how do you think all of those pieces fit together? Because that's going to be your wings, uh, right, in, in a year or two. Yeah, I certainly agree. Complimenting those guys that you have, the, the wings that you mentioned. Uh, Roger's just a dog. Like he's, he's very physical, very tough, hard nosed, and uh, wants to defend and maybe 
Goody's not going to ultimately be a lockdown defender. Maybe he's better defensively than, than what maybe we anticipated, but those guys, Goody in particular, knockdown shooter. So ability to stretch the floor. Uh, Melinda's is thought to be someone that's going to be a, a decent three point shooter, obviously a very good long athlete uh, who needs to fill out a little bit. And, and Rogers is going to come in and be someone that can take it off the dribble, go to the basket, just do a lot of the dirty work that I know that Luke Goody's shown he's willing to do here early on, which is great. And I think that also you could factor Coleman Hawkins into the mix as well. I think that yeah. Rogers and Hawkins pairing together is something to be really excited about just on two versatile forwards with a lot of length. And I mean, it wasn't that long ago we were sitting and talking about roster construction and what Illinois is missing. It's like length and athleticism, particularly kind of that three, four mold. And uh, Hawkins obviously has shown like energy guy, uh, willing to do some things defensively that have been exciting. And uh, if you could play Rogers at the three and Hawkins at the four, and I, I know you got to see who's going to fill the five ultimately when Kofi's gone, but uh, what you have at guard and then obviously Goody factoring in there. Uh, lots to be excited about. Yeah. I think he fits really, really well. I mean, I think you and I, in the last podcast, we talked about him said like Demonte Williams, four inches taller. I got now Demonte's turned into um, at least last year, a dead eye shooter. Ty's got a ways to go there. Um, but what, what do you think can be his impact right away? Derek, because I know, you know, true freshman and coming into a program that that's kind of established, but Illinois will lose a lot next year with DeMonte on his way out. Trent Frazier, we expect Kofi Coburn. We'll see about Andre Curbelo. Um, but Jacob Grandison could be a guy that is he going to use a, another year of eligibility? There's obviously Melendez and Goody there, but uh, how much do you think Rogers are playing to the mix right away as a true freshman? Yeah, initial thought would be he comes in and plays quite a bit. I think that like you said, with Grandison making the decision, that'd be a guy that's 24 going on 25 and a lot of experience. And he does play that three, four. Uh, so he'd be someone that you'd have to probably slot in behind and good. He's going to develop and he's going to be in the mix for sure at the, at the very, very least. And we even talked about it on the pod last week that they do want to be in the mix for a guard, probably in the transfer portal, probably essentially if, if you don't get Grandison back or uh, just kind of that DeMonte mold, but Rodgers definitely fills that. I think that because he's more physically ready right away, because he's uh, going to be someone that can handle the physicality of the Big Ten, just by the way that he's built right now, uh, I think that he translates right away uh, to what you need physically. And I, I think that just kind of, I mean, Brad said it last week that I judge freshmen and their ability to play early on defense. And the fact that Ty is considered one of the better two-way players in this class is something that he's going to definitely Want, he's going to look at it and say, okay, I, I trust him to go out there and make an impact. He's going to have the length and have the athleticism. So I think at the very least, a, a piece off the bench is in, in the rotation. And if you do have a situation where Granderson doesn't come back, maybe he pushes Lou Goody and, and that's a run for kind of that spot on the wing. Tim Anderson's a popular name in Chicago circles uh, in more ways than one. I don't know if Illini fans are doing bat flips. I think you wrote that, Derek, so I want to give you credit for that um, after this. But, um, I mean, kudos to Brad Underwood because his Chicago guys that he hires, I know he, you know, Ching Coleman recruited more in Chicago, and, and Tim Anderson's certainly going to recruit more in Chicago. And, and yeah, obviously, Ty Rogers is from Michigan, but – he has connections to Ty Streets, right? Who's the Mean Streets AU program uh, director, former up stud at every sport he ever played, including playing in the NFL. Um, but Ching Coleman right away is able to get Iowa to Sumo and then is able to get Adam Miller after that. And now to get Ty Rogers and Marez Johnson in the same month, Derek, uh, we were sitting there going, eh, Tim Anderson, like, is he, is he going to wait till maybe next spring, summer to make a big impact recruiting wise? He said, eh, don't, don't count me out guys. Um, and he gets... You know, two top 100 level talents, probably top 60 level talents with both those guys. Pretty good month for Tim Anderson and, and Brad Underwood. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say that this one was like the, the field of dreams walk off by Tim Anderson level of get uh, in terms of like Ty Rogers, again, beating out Tom Izzo, where this was one where Michigan State and, and contrary to Luke Goody and, and even Podjemski, pa like we were pulling uh, four star level talents out of adjacent states like Wisconsin didn't offer pods and you had Goody who wasn't offered by Indiana and, and Purdue this one Michigan State was pushing to the very very end so to be able to beat them out is uh, a big feather in his cap and a guy that said on our zoom you know this summer when he was hired just like I know I'm coming in and I'm expected to recruit at a high level and he said I think it was like I'm with it we're going to get that done and 
I mean, that's what he's doing. And I think that we talked about the impact of getting him Raj Johnson early because of his relationship with James Brown and just kind of making that imprint right away on an early class, a guy that has a lot of high upside. And then to add one more big piece next to Epps and Harris, and we know that those are really good gets in at the guard spots when there's been a need there. But to just add in one more top 100 guy and, and add that piece to the wing, I mean, that, that says a lot about Tim. And, uh, you know, that last spot on the staff was uh, when you had the Alan Huss situation for Brad. And it's like, OK, what how, is Brad getting told no a bunch? Like, what's he going to do? What's that spot going to look like? And to fill it with Tim and, and have Tim come in right away and just really make an impact, make waves is a big deal. I know, um, you know, the assistants get a lot of credit and they should. Right. Uh, but Merez Johnson, his high school coach, Roshan Russell, gave a ton of credit to Brad Underwood uh, and, and his involvement in that recruitment. Uh, it, it seems like Brad really, really wanted Ty Rogers here as well. But just to zoom out, Derek, I mean, this is a guy we thought X's and O's wise. Like I said, maybe Illinois found it's it's John Beeline. Uh, and the one thing John Beeline did is he turned success on the court with guys he recruited and developed. Um, and obviously, I would assume it was highly ranked and Kofi Coburn was highly ranked, but he developed those guys, got the most out of them. And he's in the process of that with Coleman Hawkins and, and uh, Andre Cabello. It, it's he deserves a ton of credit. Um, he deserves a ton of credit for building what he's building, which seems like such a sustainable model of having success in the Big Ten because the Big Ten's loaded, right? I mean, Juwan Howard is recruiting at a ridiculously high level. Um, Chris Holtman is recruiting extremely well right now. We know Matt Painter every year seems to have top five, top six classes, uh, maybe not with the superstars, but he develops them well. Um, so to have this, uh, and, and we know Maryland always seems to have talent, so uh, it seems like Brad Underwood's nudging out Maryland a little bit here. And, and really in this recruitment in, in Michigan state, because Michigan state got Max Christie and he's exciting, but it feels like Illinois is starting to inch above that program, which is just pretty unbelievable for where they were just three years ago to the day, Derek, I, I arrived in Maui and they went mm. on three and had that terrible season. It's amazing how far they've come and how much he's stacking this thing. Yeah, and that's a great point. We do get caught up in, and Brad would even say, you know, he gives a lot of credit to his assistants and allows them a lot of, uh, a lot of control in terms of developing the relationships. And uh, that is a lot of what recruiting is about. But the head man is, is part of the, especially the closing pitch and relating with the, the family and the, and the recruits. And for him to not only, you know, do what he's done and getting Io and Kofi, but then to reload when you lose Antigua and you lose Chen, and I was like, how are we going to get players and get Chester and Tim Anderson? At the very least, like getting, building the program up to a status where you can have some next level talent getters come in and be able to do that. But like you said with Merez, like really related well with Underwood and he was very active. And I think that I mean, we'll hear from Ty, who's been a very quiet guy throughout this recruitment, but I would have to imagine that just Brad Underwood's makeup and like what he values and, uh, his swagger, his toughness, like had to relate with Ty and, and how he plays. And uh, it, it is, it's crazy to think about how, where Illinois has risen from and now where they're at. And now not only in the place of, well, it's a flash of you know, one seed and then you know, get Kofi back. So that's going to be another nice season, but what are you going to do from there? It's, it's set up to be in that top mix in the league for, for a while now. So that's a huge credit to him and competing with some, some big time programs and ones that can really, really recruit. So uh, that says a lot about Brad and what he's been able to do. And yeah, it's just keep on building this thing. Okay, Derek, when they land one, the next question of course is who's next, right? It, I, I can't imagine like what the boards are like, I haven't checked them since then, but I, this is pretty much it um, for, for the fall. I would imagine. I mean, this is the last day of the signing period. Um, but there's, there should be some open scholarships at some point, right? Like right now they have one available and that's assuming Jacob Grandis and Austin Hutcherson don't come back. Right. But we expect there could be some turnover in the off season as there usually is, but going into the spring is the focus 2023, 2024, or what will they be looking at in the transfer market? Yeah, I think that high school wise, it will be very much focused on those future classes, 2023, 2024, seeing if you can push someone in 24 to play with Merez or in 23, you got Jeremy Fears, you got Kylan Boswell, those guys, a lot of attention around them. And 
Uh, see if you can get one of those to pop early. I, I think that would be a big focus. Uh, and then in the transfer portal, you're going to look at the five and you kind of got to be patient with that because Kofi's going to ultimately have to make his decision. And I mean, if he's here, it's, it's tough to sell someone on coming in uh, and playing behind him. Obviously you got Omar Payne already as well. So that's kind of going to be one you got to be a little bit more patient on. Of course, you're going to do your homework. You're going to see what's in the portal or hear some buzz in terms of what might be able to be available. And that's kind of, you're just your due diligence. Uh, I, I think that, like I mentioned before, I think at guard, you're going to at least, you know, kind of check the pulse of what that looks like uh, in terms of having someone with some experience, because you, while you do really like Ty and Luke Goody and uh, some of those guys at the off guard spots, like losing DeMonte, if you were to lose Granison, it'd be nice to have just a, a veteran, an older guy to kind of put in that mix. And uh, as you mentioned, though, it will matter, like some of the turnover after the season and some of the attrition that, may or may not take place. So uh, that's kind of where it is as far as the transfer mix. I think that at a five spot, I don't think you're going to find ultimately a high school guy to come in. And uh, I know that was one that they looked at with Cam Corrin and even Braden Huff, but probably looking transfer portal. But at this point, I think it's going to be full steam ahead with 23. See if you can get a Jeremy Fears to to get pushed over the edge and commit early and try to you know get some of that in-state ties for 23 where there's a lot of talented players from the state of Illinois and they've hosted guys on campus this fall if you can make some waves in that class and, and get that thing moving I think that would be the next goal for this staff so I'm looking at this scholarship chart and just kind of like looking at 22-23 Derek and uh assuming Grand like Grandison or Hutcherson could come back right but even if assuming they're gone and Kofi's gone you'd have Omar Payne and Benjamin Bossman's Verdonk as your seniors uh, even though Payne, I think, would have another year of eligibility, and so would Verdon. Andre Corbell, Coleman Hawkins, Brandon Lieb uh, is your juniors. Luke Goody, RJ Melendez, Brandon Podjemski, Sincere Harris, Jaden Hepps, uh, and Ty Rogers. There'd be a little bit of a reset there, right? But if you have Corbello and Hawkins, and then you're adding Goody, Melendez, you know, taking steps forwards as sophomores, Omar Payne, and maybe one of Grandison or Hutcherson is back, and then you had three talented true freshmen, like that's a reset where you're still top half big 10, right? And, and you're possibly if Jade Neps is great right away or an all freshman team guy, or if, uh, you know, Ty Rogers is a starter right away and just gives you some tough DeMonte Williams like things. Like all of a sudden you, you're still maybe in contention towards the top of, of the big 10. Like that's a reset year that we see with Michigan now, or we see with Purdue or we see with, you know, Michigan state, even when they have down years, they're, they're still a no doubt NCAA tournament team. Yeah, it'd be nice to go into offseason and say, you know, this could be a little bit of a down year. You're probably projected an eight or nine seed. And you're going to the tournament. Like, that's the expectation. And if, if things go right, obviously, you'd be very talented. You'd be a, a younger squad in terms of some of the role players you'd be relying on. But if those clicked into place, if Epps plays to his level, if, you know, Roger's very talented, if Goody and, like you said, Melendez would take steps forward, uh, and you would still have – you know, obviously some star power in Curbelo, and I think that Hawkins can become a star. And if you are going to lose Kofi, uh, obviously he'd be a star if he were to say, you know what, one more season NIL has been pretty good to me. And I'll just double down on saying I want to be one of the greatest, not the greatest at Illinois. Uh, if he were to leave, of course, you could command, you would imagine a, a high-level big man in the transfer portal. You hope that Omar Payne, by the end of the year, you're feeling pretty decent about him if he is going to be your five, but he's going to have to earn that. Uh, so, yeah, I think, like you, to your point, ultimately just kind of you'd still have depth, you'd still have a lot of talent, and it might be a year where you, you lose some big pieces, but you'd say, hey, you know, this team can still be very, very competitive, be a team that's going to make the tournament, and that's that's saying a lot when Illinois fans not that long ago were just dreaming for the upside of a season to be, let's get to the tournament. So, uh, yeah, again, says a lot about what Brad's done here. Yeah, and there's got to be a lot of confidence at this point, Derek. And I know it's coming off Andre Corbello's probably worst game of his career, right? But, like, it's, a, it's his second game of the season. His second is a starter, which I think you've made that point. It's like his second career start uh, in college basketball. The development that the staff has done with certain guys, whether it's Io, whether it's – I mean, even Andres Felice or um, Kofi Coburn – has been they deserve a lot of faith in being able to develop these guys. I think that's why you have so much faith in a guy like Matt Painter is, you know, he, you know, he's going to get these guys and develop them really well. We're seeing that with Coleman Hawkins right now. Um, 
So you just have faith that like towards the end of these seasons, they should get better. So even if there's growing pains like this year, I think this team could be dangerous at the end of the year. And I think next year when they have a bunch of freshmen, I think there could be, as most teams are having, Michigan's having right now, they're going to be really dangerous in March, but they got a bunch of young guys that are playing. I think this staff has shown that um, they get better as the season goes along. It's two straight years now we've seen them just take off. And actually three, right? I mean, when I was a freshman, they were awful early on, then played pretty well towards Big Ten play. So just another thing to keep in mind. The other thought I had about this, and, and Isaac Trotter texted me uh, and said, these guys uh, in this recruiting class give no Fs. Um, so Jaden <laughs> Epps, Sincere Harris, Ty Rogers. That's a Chester Frazier, Brad Underwood type of class. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you're going to lose Trent and DeMonte, guys that are big, big parts of that culture, big parts of the toughness, yeah, this this class does just have those guys all over it in terms of kind of that style, that mindset that, um, yeah, I mean, Illinois has developed into, we talked a lot about a, a Big Ten team that's not afraid to, to mix it up with anybody, not afraid to talk some trash, not afraid to uh, be one of the, the grittier teams uh, out there. And that's that's what you hope for, I think, when you take over a program is that your roster ultimately looks like you and, and has a bunch of your guys on it. And that's that's what those guys are. I mean, not only are they really talented, they're all top 100 type of guys, but they are very, very much competitive, tough, gritty. Like that is exciting uh, in terms of kind of just the makeup of that team. You, you add in Coleman, who's going to still be there, and Curbell. Like, that's a team that's going to ruffle some feathers around the, the league. But I mean, they're... I was about to say, this team's going to still piss some people off, Derek. It will. It will. <laughs> I but, think Brad uh, Underwood, I think Brad Underwood loves that. Um, but what a get for uh, Tim Anderson, Brad Underwood, and the Illini staff uh, to get Ty Rogers. Uh, I'm going to catch up with Joe Hendrickson. So we'll have another pod focusing on Ty Rogers, uh, a guy I know you and I really respect and obviously has the pulse and knows these guys really well. So we'll have that coming up uh, as well. But Derek Piper, get to work, man. Like it's uh, Illinois basketball keeping us busy and uh, some good news after a, a bad news Monday. Yep, we will be busy at Illini and Fire. We're going to want to check out all of our coverage. And I've been told to keep some plans free this afternoon. So hopefully we'll have we'll be hearing from Brad Underwood, hopefully at some point, to talk about this big get in Ty Rogers. Which means a signing will happen. So uh, be tuned for that. Thank you for listening to the Illini Inquirer podcast. If you don't already, give us a follow wherever you get your podcast. Uh, subscribe to us. Give us a rating, review. We appreciate that. And for all the latest, check out Illini Inquirer as well. Until then, everybody, take care. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you next time on the Illini Inquirer podcast.